Hey everybody, it's Seth Jones, editor of Athletic Turf News. I'm out here at Sporting Park. Uh, we're being joined by Justin Bland. He's the head groundskeeper. We're in Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, Justin, thanks for taking the time to show me around today and uh, give me a tour of what's really one of the great facilities in all of MLS soccer. Oh, sure. Thanks. Not a problem. Uh, we're in our third season here at uh, Sporting Park. Uh, the fields uh, consist of bluegrass, a little bit of ryegrass, uh, powered by John Deere equipment. Um, we're on a 10-inch profile. Uh, we do have sub air in the field and uh, we do utilize that through the summer for exchange of gases in the root zone and, and if needed uh, to extract water from the field. Great. How often do you think you, do you find yourself using the sub air and, and what, what are the situations that you're using, using it in? Um, in a game situation, let's say we have a downpour, then we would, we would get rid of excess water if we were, if we were getting behind at all. Um, we will run pressure daily through the summer months, like I said, to exchange gases and get fresh air down there. Um, you know, and we'll give it three shots of 30 minutes throughout the day to help that. Okay, great. Now we were chatting uh, as I got out here and I, and I just found out that uh, you're a Mizzou football guy. <laughs> Had I known that, I might not have come out here so soon. No. Uh, but I, and, and this also breaks a policy I have of appearing on camera with someone so, so much bigger than I am. But this shows you how I would do against uh, an offensive lineman. Uh, tell, tell me about your career path and how you got to, to where you are today. Well, sure. Uh, like you said, I played football at Mizzou from 98 to 01 and then had a short stint of a couple camps in the NFL and played one season in NFL Europe and then after college I uh, worked for the Royals for a number of years and then one season with the Chiefs and then started with uh, at the time Kansas City Wizards in 2007 and here we are today sporting Kansas City. So that's pretty cool that you went from I mean back I remember when the, when the Wizards back then played at Arrowhead and now you have this facility so you really had, that's that's you had to be excited when this facility was being built and did you did you keep a close eye on what they were doing with the field and the construction of this property oh yeah absolutely we were we had someone here every day making sure uh, everything was to our liking as, as the field was going in and and like you said when we started playing at Arrowhead you know we've come a long way since then not only as far as facilities which is by far one of the one of the best in the world um, we went from Arrowhead then to cab and you know I think our now we're here selling out every game where I think maybe we were drawing in five six thousand fans before so it's just been a a pretty cool thing to watch soccer grow in Kansas City. Great. Now, now we are in my backyard. I live about 40 minutes from the park here, and so I try and catch sporting on TV whenever I can. I come out to the park a lot as well. But uh, one thing I notice, whenever sporting scores a goal, it's a big celebration, but they fire off this giant confetti cannon, and there's confetti all over the place, and I think that's cool, but that's got to be a huge pain in the ass, too. I mean, I mean what, how do you guys handle all the all the basically trash on the field. <laughs> well, I tell you, it seems like uh, one game's worth of confetti can in the last three weeks blowing through the stadium, but uh, we blow the field off post-game and then try to pick up as much as we can, and then, of course, the next day we come back in, it looks like we didn't do anything. <laughs> after the after the cleaning crew goes through the stands and more confetti blows off the roof, it's just a never-ending process. So you might be just a little bit hoping for a low-scoring <laughs> game every once in a while. Uh, so another thing I want to ask you about is, uh, and one of the reasons I want to come out and talk to you now is, uh, coming July 31st, you guys get to host the MLS All Star Game, which is a, a big honor for any any sport, any any team, any local team, and any sports turf manager. What's that going to mean for you and your crew, and and just uh, and how excited are you for that event to come here? Oh man, we're we're extremely excited. Uh, you know, it's not too many events that uh, you get to manage. You know, your surface that will be a, a worldwide uh, spectacle like the All Star Game will be. Um, you know, we take a lot of pride in it in the field and, and in, any, in any match for that matter. But, you know, it's, it's going to be a big thing for Kansas City, I think, and there's a lot of hub around it, and uh, it's, it's going to be a good deal. Great. Well, hey, Justin, appreciate your time again. Great work on the facility here. It always looks, always looks good when it come out to the park. Uh, once again, folks, here, this, I'm here with Justin Bland. He's the head groundskeeper at Sporting Park, and you can check out this field on July 31st when they're hosting the All-Star Game. So, Justin, uh, i got to say rock chalk, but <laughs> I do appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. Okay, take care. Yep. Thanks for watching Athletic Turf News.